hey, I want to prove to you why I think faith is absolutely essential to accomplishing massive things with your life. If you're serious about setting big goals and accomplishing those goals, then you're going to want to check out this video. Let's roll. Hey, welcome. My name is Ellis Hammond. This is the first ever Think Wealthy Scripture series. And what I want to do a couple times a month is just open up God's Word and begin to look about what does that teach us as entrepreneurs, as investors, as those whose calling is to build and steward capital for the glory of God and the good of others. What can we learn from God in His Word that applies to us? And in this video for today, I want to talk about faith. What is so key about faith? And then what are the things that we have to watch out for that can destroy our faith, that can kill our faith, that can keep us thinking small? And so where I want to start with today is Hebrews 11.1, because this, if you're asking, well, what is faith? Let's define faith. Let's break this down. And Hebrews 11.1 says this, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And so that's the definition right there. What if Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. In other words, Faith is, I know, even though I don't see the result yet, that it is going to happen. We know faith is essential to the Christian life. I mean, without faith, the scriptures say it's impossible to please God. By grace, through faith, we have been saved, not by works so that no man may boast, right? So we know faith is essential to the Christian life. It's what we place our hope in, right? Faith is, we know that Christ will return. We place faith in what Christ has done for us, and we place faith that Christ will return. It's key to us as Christians, but it's also key to us as entrepreneurs. What I mean by this, the best entrepreneurs, those who really accomplish massive things with their life, they have faith in the end goal of what God has called them to or whatever that is. Even though they don't have all the answers yet, they have faith, they have conviction that I will get there. And you could call that belief, you could call that faith, whatever, but that's what it is. It is belief, it is faith. And in the same way that we're growing as Christians, the same way we're growing as faith-based entrepreneurs, faith-based investors. So the first question I would ask you is, do you know what you want? And have you set a target for what that looks like? And if I could give you some advice, I would say, be careful of what that target is. Be careful that it's not too small. Because by faith, and you could say by faith, the way God's wired us, your brain will begin to find the answers that you have set the target for. And so if you're in real estate and you say, man, I wanna learn how to buy a million dollars of real estate one day, that's great. Just know that you'll go find the answers to buy a million dollars of real estate. But if you say, I wanna go buy a billion dollars of real estate, the answer is true as well in that you will begin to find the answers. You'll begin to find the relationships. You'll begin to find the partnerships to go buy a billion dollars of real estate. And so, do you know what you want? Are you clear in your target? And is it big enough? Is it big enough? Remember this, you can't get answers if you don't know what you want. And you can't solve for what you don't have answers for. And so, by faith, I think it, man, all of us as faith-driven investors, faith-driven entrepreneurs, we have to really get clear and really spend some time with God and asking God, what are you calling me to? Is this big enough? Am I setting these goals or am I setting these targets based on the environment that I grew up in, based on what my parents said was right, or is this really from you? Is this really from you? And I believe that we serve a God that wants us to thrive and flourish and accomplish massive things for His kingdom. And so I would just say, man, if it's small, consider why. Is it because you're fearful of going to the next level or doing something big? And so faith is absolutely essential to us as investors, as entrepreneurs. And, and here's the thing that I want to cover in the next couple minutes is, if faith is essential, what then should we look out for that could destroy that faith? What do we have to be aware of as faith-driven investors that could destroy that faith or, or distract us or even just cause us to shoot to low and not accomplish bigger things. I got five things for you today. Make sure you write these down and don't miss these because you're going, you're going to want to go back and say, because these things happen to all of us. So you're going to want to see, man, assess, am I struggling with this? Is this attacking me? Is this taking away from my faith? Okay. And so here are the five things. Number one, 
It's fear. Fear will kick in when you set massive goals. No doubt about it. Anytime I say, man, we're going to go after this. Here's our goal. I get really excited about it. And then I let it sit, right, for an hour, maybe overnight. And I wake up and the next day I'm thinking, oh, that's scary. Man, I don't know if I can accomplish that. What will I have to give up in order to go do that? And do I really want to do that much work? What will my wife think? I make all of these excuses. Why? Because fear kicks in. That spirit of timidity. It's saying, Ellis, you can't go do that. You can't go do that. Man, you don't, you don't have that experience or that track record. And so, all I want to say this, it takes the same amount of energy to move backwards as it does to move forward. And so, and so in those moments, catch yourself, realize, that's a fearful thought. God has not given me a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. And so I can conquer that fear and address that. Think positively. Begin to think differently. Just be aware of that. Is that is fear and that is not from the Lord. Number two. I love this one, man, because this is so big for uh, faith-driven investors. Is that you can only attract what you feel worthy of. And this is the gospel, folks. Right? That you have been purchased by the blood of Christ, that God has already said that you, no matter what you do moving forward, that he has already declared you his son or his daughter. And that makes you infinitely worthy. Why would amazing things not come my way? Why would I not be able to attract great people and more wealth and more opportunities? Because God is infinitely worthy. And when we see this so much, like even in the relationships where people stay around too long in a toxic relationship, why? Because they don't believe that they can go find better. And so this is the same true, same case about money. Same thing, you know, about opportunity. Is, are you in this position because you don't see yourself worthy or deserving of getting more? And I would say, man, go back to the Gospels. That God has called you His child. You are the son of an infinite, eternal, and amazing God. And so consider that. Have you wrestled with that? Do you understand your identity and who you are in your worth as a believer, as a child of God? Number three is this. We don't want or won't allow others to be our teacher. I got it all figured out. Or I don't want to go learn from someone else. I don't need those gurus or whatever. Listen. I just don't understand that mentality. If someone else has the answers already and that can give, and I don't have to go spend the same amount of time they spent to go learn those answers, why would I not hire them, invest in them, go spend time with them? Mentors or teachers has changed the game for me. And this is what I realized early on. Money, I do not serve money. So I will trade money in as much money as it takes for what? For time. And what mentors and teachers give me is my time back. And so of course I'd be willing to exchange money in order to get time so that I can go create more money, so I can go create more opportunities, so I can go create more generous opportunities in the world. And so don't be hesitant about looking for mentors or teachers in your life. Receive that and realize God has placed them in your life to give you back more time and more opportunity. The number four killer this is so huge, and this hits every, every time that I share this, and people are like, wow, Ellis, I need, I need to go work on this one. And this is going to hit, because this is hard, and this is one of the hardest ones on the list. Number four is that the people around you are not believing. And I don't necessarily mean they're not Christians, because maybe your spouse is, is a Christian or a follower of God, or your children are. But what I mean is that they don't share this massive belief and massive drive that you have to want to go do something big. And that is such a killer. It is such a killer. To, if you're scared to share with your spouse or share with your parents or your, your kids about the big things that God's placed on your heart and on your mind, then that can be a massive hindrance to you. And so a couple of things that, that I would share. The first thing is this. You got to admit and accept that it's your fault. It's your fault that significant other is not on the same page as you. It's not their fault. Because you have been going through this journey of developing this faith and thinking bigger. And you haven't done a good enough job yet of bringing them along with you. All of these I've learned kind of by observing and studying millionaires and mentors. Number four, the one I'm telling you right now, I learned that by watching me. 
So this is the one where I've failed the most. And I remember like I was a pastor for six years. We needed different ways to continue to build wealth, support our ministry. I never thought I'd be a full-time investor and entrepreneur, but here we are today. But I had to go through a journey, and I remember reading books, Think and Grow Rich, Millionaire Success Habits, and, and just so many books that were stretching my mind and causing me to think different about money and wealth. And I was consuming a lot of things. I was going to conferences. I was hanging around people who were thinking bigger and differently. And then I just assumed that my wife by osmosis or whatever it was, was going to begin to think the same way. And I realized that was so silly that she wasn't investing this time and energy the same way I was. And so how could I expect her to be on the same page? And so that, that hit me like a ton of bricks and we worked really hard to begin to read stuff together and attend stuff together. And even the way that we set our budget now, I find this to be a great practice. And that instead of just looking kind of retroactively at our budget, we want to look forward and say, what do we want to accomplish this year? What do we want to do together? How much do we want to be able to give? Where do we want to go on vacation? And then together say, what do we have to create? How much value do we have to bring into the world in order to go accomplish those things? Because that's a different way of thinking. It's a really fun way to begin to think bigger together. Man, number four is just really working hard to get the core people around you on your team, on the same page, so that there's no hesitation, there's no hindrance when you're talking about going big. You're on the same page about the sacrifices, the time that's gonna take to be able to get there. Okay, that's number four. Number five faith killer is not being around other people full of faith, being around negative people. I wanna challenge you, try and go 24 hours. Try and go 24 hours without having a negative thought or seeing a negative piece of news or hearing something negative from somebody else. Negativity is a crusher. And the, and the scriptures clearly talk about this. I mean, Paul in Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9, go look about, look, go look this up. Paul talks about, think about things that are excellent. Think about the things that are worthy and noble and righteous. Why? Because Paul understands the power of thought, the power of thinking. And if you're around people who are bringing you down, who are negative towards your goals, this is such a killer. And call that out. Like my friends know now, like if I'm talking about what, I, what we want to go accomplish and what we're going to go do together, don't bring that down, especially if we're in brainstorming mode, you know? And so I just, uh, I, I think number five, being around people full of faith. So you got to work. That's why I love Mastermind. That's why we started Kingdom REI, to put people full of faith together so that we can go accomplish bigger things. It's hard. This is a hard one. This is going to take time, energy. I'm in multiple masterminds for this reason alone is because I love showing up to places that put me around people with a bigger mindset than me. And so again, let me recap those, the five faith killers. If you want to grow massive faith in your life, massive faith, massive belief to go do massive things uh, in this lifetime for the glory of God so that we can say, man, look, I serve a big God. That's how I'm able to do these things. He's put this on my heart. He's given me the faith to be able to go do that. The five killers that you have to watch out for, you have to work through is fear, is you have to feel worthy, right, of being able to attract what you feel worthy of. Three is we don't want to allow others to be our teacher for the people around you, especially your significant other not believing as well. And then five, being around positive people, not negative people. That is the key to building massive faith. I hope you enjoyed this Think Wealthy Scripture series. If you like this, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I look forward to continuing to do these. Think Wealthy. Cheers.